Hello and welcome to the Should You Buy for the Corgi, the newest PGI original that was dropped on us today, and with the tagline, who's a good boy? We only have a day and four hours in order to get into the early adopter rewards. This is very short duration, normally give us at least a month, so this is a surprise to us, the first time this has occurred. But let's go through the mech, its stats, its possible hard point locations and hitboxes based on the concept art, and whether or not you should buy this mech. Now going down here, standard packs, as they are typically, except there's one very interesting difference with them. All of the mechs are the same. We have the Corgi 1 as being the only variant um, offered in these standard packs, with the special pack having a Corgi 1 special variant. So, I mean, this is functionally okay, I guess, because you don't need three of a variant uh, in order to uh, level out your mech anymore with the new skill tree system. So you don't need to have a lot of variety. You could theoretically just get the same mech. You have three different ones. You can outfit them in different ways and skill them out in different ways to complement their builds. So yeah, it's functional. You get your premium mech bays, you get your premium time like you would expect. You get Corgi Warhorn standing items and cockpit items, as well as some titles and badges. You get the hero add-on, which is the CA Cardigan. We're going to take a look at this mech and see if it's pay to win compared to other mechs in the game. And also, we have the Corgi 1 again in the reinforcements, just in case you wanted to do some more build variation on your Corgi 1s. The ultimate pack is everything all together, and I still think that these should have a little bit of a price reduction on them for getting everything at once, but uh, whatever. If you want the early adopter rewards, like I said earlier, you have to get them very quickly as you only have a couple days to do it, but it gives you some standing cockpit items, a pattern for the clan wolf, new decals of the hot dog and the corgi, some colors, and a see bill bundle in order to level them out on your uh, gxp or modify their builds but let's take a look at the mech specs and this should go fairly quickly as there actually is only two variants but these variants are doing some very interesting firsts for mech warrior online that really give you an idea of what we could possibly do in the game after these mechs come out because there's got to be some new tech allowing them to take these builds. To start off, we have the Corgi. It is a 10-tonner, so that's the smallest mech we've ever had. Has a 100XL as its base engine, goes 162 kph, has a max engine rating of 400, and has 614 armor. This is one of the things I said. They're doing stuff on this mech that you would not be able to do on typical mechs, as 614 armor is the same amount of armor as a, an assault mech, a 100 tonner. So how they're fitting that armor on, I'm not sure. There's gotta be some sort of quirk that gives it additional armor re like armor reduction in tonnage, or it gives additional tonnage to the mech in order to fit that. It has endo steel, single heat sinks, no jump jets, not ECM compatible and not mass compatible. However, the cardigan here is ECM compatible. So you can be a little sneaky doge. But let us pop over to the Spreadsheet Warrior and take a look at some of its stats here. So, to start off, the Corgi, 10 tons, and we've got a various selection of engines and their engine weights, their top speeds. And considering the fact that we now have the ability to take a 400, let's just take the, this 225 on it and make it a 400, I'm not sure if you could actually attain this because the engine weight is 33.5 and our max tonnage is only 10 even if we can no consider any armor or any structure which at minimum our structure is going to be half a ton we are 20 tons or so short of being able to fit that 400 so the really the closest thing we're going to get is around the 225 we're going to be able to only go around 350 364 here to 391 kph after tweak so a little bit of a downside there is you won't be able to utilize its full potential of almost 700 kilometers an hour. For structure, like I said, half a ton for its structure weight as that's 5% of the total weight of the mech. And this is where the calculations break down a little bit and where we'll have to see 
what quirks this mech gets because the pharaoh armor this is a clan battle mech so i'm using the clan pharaoh armor stats would be 15.99 tons for this particular mech which unfortunately even with the 60 standard rated engine which is actually minus 2.5 tons that comes with the Irby you can't fit that amount of armor on so you won't be able to fully armor the mech but you could realistically armor it just to shave a bunch armor it similar to what you would do on a mech of its size so you could theoretically if i bump this temporarily to 20 just so my uh spreadsheet actually functions because the spreadsheet actually broke when i put in the tonnage of 10 and it wouldn't calculate anything you could theoretically have some decent pod space on this mech because the armor weight wouldn't be that much it would only be about four tons ish three and a half four tons for this mech you could have a pod space of hmm, say you know five to seven tons depending on if you're taking the minus 2.5 engine rating if you try to go for a little bit faster maybe that's going to give you an issue where you're not going to be uh, having as much pod space but you could fit on a decent quantity of laser weapons as those are low in weight and great efficiency for a lighter mech but back to the corgi here let us talk about its hard points and specifically the weapons that are actually currently equipped on it because there is some new tech on here which is really interesting to start off with the corgi one even though it is 10 tons it has dual atm 3s and dual lbx 20s i uh, keep in note that this is a clan mech just so you know those lb 20s would be able to fit in a signed torso with a clan xl engine so Something about that is off because LB20s, if I'm not mistaken, are around 12 tons. So one of those shouldn't really even be able to fit on this mech, but somehow this has two. So it is rivaling certain heavies and such in terms of firepower, even though it has a 10 tonner that is going 162 kph. This is a very effective mech for its tonnage and honestly as it's described here a little op they've got to have some level of technology in this where those lb20s have a reduced weight of some kind maybe down to a single ton then you could possibly start to fit some of this technology on it but uh, alas let's just look at the hard points one missile in each arm and one ballistic in each side torso so a little weak when it comes to the weapons that you would think you would typically put on this mech maybe a pair of serms maybe a pair of machine guns and that's probably all this thing can take but it is a 10 tonner it is going to be going extremely fast and if they keep up with the volumetric scaling like they've done before it's going to be very small and hard to hit so i could actually see a flanking skirmishing roll with a pair of light machine guns a pair of serum sixes maybe with artemis depends on how much weight you have left over for srms but um, might be a good flanker next up is the cardigan the hero which has ecm but even beyond ecm it has some really interesting tech on it it has the watchdog uh, probe on there which we have to pop over and we've opened up sarna for a few of these it has the sonic cannon it has the watchdog probe and the bloodhound active probe so let's go through that the sonic cannon closest thing i could find was a sonic stunner which was like an infant like a uh, infantry pistol of some kind in battle tech so maybe it has one of those built into its cockpit it doesn't have if i go back here it doesn't have a head hard point but yet it has a sonic cannon in its head so is this something that doesn't require a hard point is it something that maybe doesn't do damage but more just disrupts the enemy i'm not sure but it's a very interesting new tech they're going to be adding with the corgi next up is the watchdog here watchdog system this is very interesting but it, it combines the best of the clan active probe systems and enhanced ecm suites so basically this thing is both a ecm and an active probe 
as we have them in the game now, but it only takes one and a half tons and occupies one slot. So it is more space efficient, it is more tonnage efficient, and it's doing double duty. So all ECM mechs that are in the game right now, when this comes out for the clans, would get a buff because they would get this better ECM system, assuming that it can be transferred to other mechs. Unfortunately, we don't know that yet. It could be that it is an exclusive for the Cardigan, but that would be a little unfortunate. And then the last is the Bloodhound Active Probe, which is another experimental se sensor thing from the Clan Invasion. Uh, but interestingly, this is a Inner Sphere tech. It was introduced by Comstar, and for some reason, it's on a Clan mech so maybe that piece of equipment has been salvaged from the inner sphere as the clans have been in the inner sphere for a while after the invasion and it's put onto this particular mech it is basically a souped up version of the beagle active probe but i'm not sure why this mech would need it because there is if the watchdog is already acting as a probe, does the bloodhound active probe supersede it, or does it enhance it? We don't know, because we don't have these details yet, but hopefully we will shortly. Oh god, go away, Discord, stop making things. For hard points on this, it is more similar to a standard, um, <laughs> god damn it. Stop popping up Discord. Okay, it's more standard to a mech you would see at this weight. We've got a bunch of energy hardpoints and an ECM. So this will be great with mass micro lasers. You're going to just swing in behind people. You won't be able to be seen. You're going to have all their info and like because you have the Bloodhound and the Watchdog. And you're just going to be able to crit them out from behind. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But... That's the different mechs. Let us go back up and take a look at the concept art. As it's so cute. It's got the little ears on here. That may be unfortunate uh, if those are, say, uh, center torso. It'll be a little easy to CT this mech as it's running around. Otherwise, maybe they're side torso. In which case, hopefully you can twist those ears. But they would be able to be shot from any angle. So... Maybe that's a detriment for this particular mech. We can see that all of its weapons are fairly high on an arm. They're not knuckle draggers, but the cockpit, which I assume has to be in the eye, or maybe the nose here, because uh, that would be kind of cute, it's relatively close to the cockpit. And in a mech of this size, this distance here from cockpit to hardpoint location is not that much. So... You're not going to really have to expose much to peek with this thing, but you're probably not going to be doing a peeking playstyle anyway because you're going to want to just run around and flank your opponent as fast as possible. Now, really, I think this is a must-buy. I mean, it's going to be super fast. It introduces new technologies. It has somehow, like, TARDIS-level technology in order to get all of this weapons and armor onto a 10-ton chassis, it's going to be amazing. But for the real event of today, April Fools, we have a Corgi April Fools event, and it is a quick play event. He attack, he protect, he attack, but most importantly, he sneaks around the back. Good doggos get prizes. Who is a good doggo? You are. So it starts in four hours from the time I've recorded this. It ends in three days and four hours. So you have basically the weekend to get this done. And is using a lot of the new um, types of quick play event things. Oh God, I'm, I'm, my words aren't coming out properly. They have a bunch of new stats they can track that they added in the last patch. And they're at using those here, the stuff like hit and run, the uh, flank the enemy five times, d d die once in quick play. So that should be pretty easy. You can get these events. You can get some cockpit items. They actually do exist, the cockpit items for the Corgi. Not the actual Corgi itself, but hey, if we raise a big enough of a stink, do you think we can get that in the game? 
I don't know. But go out there, get some Warhorns and Cockpit items with this fun April Fool's event, and uh, you should buy it. But thanks for watching the Should You Buy for the Corgi, and good hunting. Who's a good boy? Oh, good boy.